Well, good morning, everyone. And welcome to our service of worship in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's great to have you with us as we join together to praise our God in spirit and truth on this, our PW gift day. And a very warm word of welcome to our guest speaker, Mrs. Karen Craig, and indeed to your husband, Rob Craig, as well. It's lovely to have you both with us, and we look forward very much to what you have to share with us later on in the service about this great work in the Okladonga Hospital in Nepal. And it's great to see you, and we praise the Lord for traveling mercies. Just a number of announcements to make uh, before our service gets underway. Uh, Again, for fuller details, please note uh, our announcement sheets Uh, provided in the foyer or indeed in the entrance hall. Uh, Just regarding the offering this morning, uh, it's to be placed into the PW gift day envelope that you received a couple of weeks ago, and that is simply to be placed in the offering plates at the door or indeed in the bucket as you leave the car park. Uh, This will be going towards assembly buildings and indeed the work of this year's PW special overseas project in the Okladonga Hospital in Nepal. On Wednesday evening, we have our midweek uh, Bible study and prayer meeting, uh, this time in Clagan's Main Hall at 8 p.m. It was lovely to have, to have our first in-person uh, Bible study last week, and the numbers were so encouraging. Uh, we do admit that we, the numbers exceeded our expectation. And so on reflection, we are going to be moving any time we're meeting in orator uh, to the main hall. We apologize. It was a wee bit cramped, maybe. And uh, we are hoping from now on to be meeting in the Orator main hall when we're meeting there. That will be in two weeks' time. But this Wednesday, we meet in Clagan's main hall, 8 p.m., and it would be lovely to have you all over there this, that evening. A reminder then, the next Sunday, our Sunday School Bible Class and Transition Pathways start again at 9.45 a.m. in the halls. And again, it would be lovely to have as many young people and children there as possible. And finally, we meet again at the usual time next Sunday at 10.45 a.m. This morning, as, as always, we join together to worship our God as his people, to glorify and lift his name on high, And as our call to worship, I want us to focus our hearts and minds from Psalm 62, verses 1 to 2, where the psalmist writes, My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. And what an assurance and hope that is for us as God's children. As we've been thinking over these past few weeks, it is Christ alone who makes our salvation possible by his death upon the cross and resurrection from the grave. He is our rock and our fortress, as our opening hymn reminds us, in Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. Let us stand together to praise God.
Well, let us unite our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bow before you and acknowledge you as our God and Lord of all. We praise you for the hope we have in Christ, for he is our rock and our salvation. He is our light, our strength and song, the cornerstone in which our lives are built. O God, there is no one like you, for you alone are the eternal one and ancient of days. Our God who goes before us, behind, above and around us. Father, there is nowhere we can hide from your presence, for you are all around us, protecting and sustaining us by your powerful right hand. O we worship you for your greatness, power and authority as king over our lives. To you alone belongs all our praise. Yet, Father, in comparison with your greatness, we're mindful of our sinfulness before you. Every day we do that which is wrong. We say, think, and do things that are not Christ-honoring. We try to live for you and die to sin, but, Father, if we're honest, our hearts are easily led astray. And so again, we come before you this morning asking for forgiveness in Jesus' name. Lord God, remove our transgressions from us and forgive us, we pray. We praise you for how our opening hymn has reminded us that you sent your Son into this world, born as a helpless babe, to live the perfect life and to one day fulfill your will by going to the cross to die for every sin we've ever committed, past, present and future. For on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ we live. O Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for our sins. But not only for dying, but for the fact that up from the grave you rose again. And as you stand in victory, sin's curse has lost its grip on us. For no power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck us as your children, saved by grace, from your hand. Oh, Father, what love, wonderful love and grace. What an assurance we have in Christ of our salvation. Holy Spirit, would you help us to live now, we pray, as those saved by grace and called to serve and declare Christ alone. For it's in his name we ask it. Amen. Well, Jean Crooks is now going to come now and lead us in our scripture reading, and you'll find that from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 27. Yes, the reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, commencing at verse 12. The body is a unit though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ, for we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. If the ear should say, because I am not an eye, if, if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts of the body every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it, 
so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should be equal to concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Amen. Well, good morning. I'm going to speak to some of the boys and girls, and not too many in here, but hopefully there are a few in other places. Um, I would normally be asking questions. I don't know whether uh, you would like to answer them or not, but uh, we'll have a go anyway. I don't know if you uh, like cake. Do you want to put your hands up if you like cake? Oh, good, good. I love cake. Um, I do quite like chocolate cake, um, but if I'm baking, I actually like to make a Victoria sponge And I have a recipe, which is, uh, I'm going uh, imperial, eight ounces of butter or margarine, uh, eight ounces of castor sugar, four eggs, and eight ounces of self-raising flour. So if I I start to think about my recipe, um, I'll have, I'll take out, well, the butter, first of all. Um, It's very useful because it helps to bind it all together. Uh, My sugar, couldn't have cake without sugar. Um, eggs I think we need the eggs too and uh, last but not least some flour in the Bible reading we looked at the body the church being the body and every part being important and every part playing a role so if I think of my cake do you know I think I'm maybe not bothered with the eggs I don't really like eggs so I'll forget about the eggs. Um, maybe I could do without the butter. You know, they say butter's not good for you. I'll do without the butter. Sugar, well, they tell you have to reduce the sugar intake. I'll forget about the sugar. I'm left with flour. Will that make me a cake? Not much of a cake anyway. It'll not do much sitting on its own. It needs everything else with it. We need to bind it all together. We need to mix it. And we need to make the cake. And so for each one of us, whether we're young or old, we are, we're told we are the body of Christ. And in, this, in the Bible reading, it about if, we're, if the body was all an eye, where would the hearing be? And so on. And we think we're maybe not important, especially young people. And children, maybe you think you're not really important. Church doesn't need you. You don't need to worry about coming to Sunday school or GB or BB or whatever. But you are important. You're just as important as the Reverend Porter is. You are really part of the church. We are all part of this fellowship here. And we're all part of the body of Christ worldwide. And he wants each one of us to play our role. We can't all be flour or sugar, or butter, or eggs. And each one of those has a different role to play. They have different gifts to make my cake. And each one of us have different gifts in which we can bring to our fellowship here and be part of it. And I pray that the Lord will help us to do that, that he will help us to see where we fit in in this, in this community here and what is our role that we play here in Clagan. And I pray that we will each find that out and that God will bless us as we serve him here. Let's just pray. Father, we do thank you that we are all part of the body of Christ and we have a role to play, each one of us. And we ask that you will help us over these next few months just to see where you have us, or where, where you have us placed here and for what reason and that we may play our role and we may uh, be part of the fellowship here and serve you. And we just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we're all going to sing together, Jesus' hands were kind hands. Let's praise God together.
Well, normally at this stage of the service, post-COVID, we are prior, or pre-COVID, I should have said. <laughs> Hopefully it's post-COVID. Uh, we, should have, we would normally have taken up our collection for the work of PW. But obviously, because of COVID, we can't. However, we do want to take this time to thank God and giving thanks for all the money that has been contributed towards this special PW Overseas Project in the Okladonga Hospital in Nepal. And we look forward to hearing what Karen will share with us in a few moments' time. But before that, I'm going to invite Hannah to come and lead us in our prayers now as we pray and give thanks for the offering and pray that God would use what has been given for the advancement of his kingdom. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bow before you today, giving you thanks for all your goodness to us. We thank you for the provision we have and all the many blessings you give to us each and every day. Our health, families, friends, jobs, food, homes, money, possessions, health care, hospitals, and so much more. Lord, we want to return to you all our thanks because you are the giver of all things, and you alone deserve all our praise and gratitude. Yet, Father, out of the riches you have given us, we want to return back to you some of what you have given us. In particular, as we give our offerings today towards the work of this year's PW Overseas Project in the Okladonga Hospital in Nepal. Lord, we ask you to use and bless this money as it seeks to go to help those in need. Father, may it be a blessing, in particular for the Mother's Waiting Home, this wonderful facility that has been created to support pregnant women. Lord, may our offering be used to provide many resources that are needed to maintain and refurbish the facilities. May it enable perinatal classes to continue as they seek to teach mothers about baby care and nutrition. And may it help provide more beds for expectant mothers so that they are safe and able to deliver their children in a safe, clean and secure hospital. Father, we thank you for all the doctors, nurses, midwives and staff within the hospital. Bless and keep them, especially with the ongoing pandemic and the strains that this has caused. Bless Peter and Valerie Lockwood, our PCI minister, missionaries who are serving in that land and are involved with the Okladonga Hospital. Lord, you know each of the challenges they face, their worries and concerns. But Father, we pray that you would go before and help them. We pray that the love of Christ might be shown through those who work in the Okladonga Hospital that mothers and their children would be safe and that they would come to know Jesus as their saviour. Lord, we pray for your blessing upon all our Presbyterian women groups across Ireland. May we all grow deeper in our love for you, each other and those in need around us. Be with Clagan and Orders PW groups as we seek to open and meet again. May each programme be a blessing to each lady who attends and all for your glory. We pray now for Karen thanking you for her willingness to come and share about this amazing work. We pray that you would keep and sustain her as she travels and speaks at different meetings. Be with her now and give her liberty of speech as she shares with us. May we all be encouraged and indeed challenged as to how we can continue to support this great work, all for the glory of Christ. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm now going to hand over to Karen. Well, can I just say uh, thank you very much for the invitation to be uh, here and to take part in the service here in Clagan this morning. Um, thank you to uh, the Reverend James Porter for his welcome uh, for the session, for allowing me to take part and participate today. Um, thanks to Lorna who made all the arrangements and gave me uh, directions uh, and so on and the ladies for taking part in the service today and we, we do pray that as we continue in our service that God will bless us um, as we meet together and may we know his presence uh, with us today. Um, thank you Hannah for your prayer and um, I'll give you an update on where the Lockwoods are and so on as I go through this today but um, your prayers are very much appreciated. Um, we have an overseas project, um, which is, as you've uh, heard, Okaldunga. The home project, PWO does too, is Care NI um, and looking for um, funding to help run 
um, I suppose, kind of uh, retreats and so on called Loved for those who have suffered with miscarriage. So keep them in your prayers as well. But in November 2019, Rob and I visited Nepal. And I was there to find out about a hospital in a rural part run by UMN, the United Mission to Nepal. PCI have a connection through our global mission workers. And I went to see how uh, maybe PW could be part uh, and, and partner with this work and support local women. I don't know what you think of when you think about Nepal. Um, for me, it's Everest, um, the Himalayas, the mountains, the scenery, um, and it is breathtaking. The mountains are beautiful. The city of Kathmandu sits in a basin surrounded by the mountains. And because it's in this basin, it is, uh, it's just pollution most days. Uh, and the mountains are hidden from view. We did see them on one or two occasions, and you can just about see them in that photograph there. Within city, the life is just like other major cities, with lots of people, traffic, and uh, the case of Kathmandu, a lot of dust and fumes. There are various means of transport, but a lot of tuk-tuks, which are those little blue and white ones up there, and scooters, and you take your life in your hands when you're trying to cross the road. Nepal is a Hindu kingdom, and four areas of the city, there are temple squares where you find a selection of temples that are to various gods. The people are there constantly visiting and worshipping in and around these places. And the challenge for our global mission workers is how to be a witness in this situation. Uh, we, as I said, are partners with the United Mission to Nepal, and this enables us to work together in a variety of ways. Um, we have a contact with the theological college there and, and a library, and both Peter Lockwood and Peter Fleming have worked with UMN. Peter and Valerie Lockwood were in Nepal at the beginning of lockdown in March 2020. Um, they they had a bit of time there which was really quite difficult for them but at the moment they are at home here in northern ireland valerie is supporting their three teenage children through school and peter continues his work with umn and although he's doing that remotely he would have been visiting many of the rural areas but this hasn't been possible he had quite a connection with the okaldonga hospital but pray for valerie and peter and the children as they come to the end of their time as PCI Global Mission Workers now in December. They have served for a number of years in Nepal and now look to see where God is going to lead them in the future. Jane and Peter Fleming are at home at the moment. Jane has been doing some online teaching for the international school, but at the moment that hasn't been possible. Peter is doing some work from home uh, in Northern Ireland for UMN, but again, he would have been in remote areas and into the rural districts, and his work is, again, more limited. Peter has had surgery recently for prostate cancer. He's waiting for a final medical report. So I would very much ask that you would pray for, pray that all will be good and that he requires no further treatment. And pray, too, that as Peter and Jane wait for visas to allow them to return to Nepal, and they really are keen to get back. I was uh, in touch with them this week. But they're waiting patiently for a good outcome. Outside the bustling capital of Kathmandu, many people live in small villages, which are built into the hillsides. For many, farming is done in terraces, as the flat, flat plains are few and far between. Hairpin bends are as numerous as on a Grand Prix circuit, with precarious drops down the hillside. And in some cases, the roads have actually been affected uh, by landslides or are perhaps not even finished. We experienced these roads as we travelled east out of Kathmandu to visit the hospital run by UMN. I was really glad we were in a four-wheel drive jeep. I'm also glad I wasn't driving. It was an eight-hour journey east out of Kathmandu. And as we journeyed, I was aware of how the terrain of this country dictates how people live and work. 
Uckledunga Community Hospital is a 50-bed general hospital run by UMN, serving a number of rural districts. The hospital is nestled in a valley 6,500 feet in the foothills of the Himalayas. It is an outpatients department, TB unit, general wards, paediatric, maternity and so on. But as it is set into the hillside, each of these wards is a separate building. The hospital has a few vehicles uh, to bring patients from the surrounding areas, but the road is really rough on the way in, and during monsoon season, the travel in and out is extremely difficult. There is a helipad for very real emergencies, but it, as it is so costly, it is only used when the hospital really can do no more and the patient has to go to Kathmandu. To help the community, and the districts, the hospital is endeavouring to provide a good standard of care for the patients. And to do that, they have set up a nursing school. This provides employment for the local people. And hopefully, when the, train, when the nurses are trained, they will stay and work in the hospital when they are qualified. And it can be difficult uh, for the hospital to get properly trained staff. And so it has been the vision of Uvraj Akura to provide this facility. He would also like to see the hospital expand about 100 beds. Already, they have more patients than they have beds. For many women living in the local districts, the hospital has been a lifeline, especially during their pregnancy. And so the vision to set up the maternal waiting home came about 15 years ago. The idea is to encourage women to come to the hospital for their antenatal visits, and then if there's a concern about the birth, it's suggested that maybe she can come and stay at the home. Classes are given on nutrition, baby care, etc. But for these ladies, it is the sense of family and more importantly, the support at the time of delivery that is of greatest benefit to them and their family. The building accommodates up to about 20 mothers-to-be, along with a husband or a family friend, who, helps, uh, to, who comes along to help with the cooking and so on. Many of the ladies live in the rural villages of the Himalayas, where there's little support. Up to 50% of births in Nepal happen at home with little or no help. So when you contribute to the PW Mission Fund, you enable us to support women like these ladies here in Nepal. One of these ladies is Bimla. She was expecting twins, but one of them had died. And she and her husband came, and they told and suggested to her that she would stay for a number of weeks until she gave birth to the other baby. And she did another baby born live to her, which was amazing. But when Bimla and others like her returned to their village, they need support. And we visited this village at 9,500 feet where we saw outreach work into the community from the hospital. They help women set up small business, businesses, maybe to grow mushrooms or maybe even have chickens and so on. And they help each other by means of a self-help microfinance group. They all contribute a little bit each week or month. They also teach the younger women how to keep safe, support them in times of difficulty, and especially any who have suffered domestic violence, that seems to be a problem in, in the village areas. So I'd ask you to pray for the work of the hospital, especially in its outreach to the communities. And the hospital wants to care not only for the sick, but for the whole person. In, since 2020, PW has supported this project with your help. And we have been able to give finance to undertake some renovations. I don't know if this is proper scaffolding, but this is how it's been done. So the outside of the building has been repainted. The bedrooms have also been painted. Rewiring, which was badly needed, has been updated. The bathrooms have been retiled. And the kitchen has also been repainted and flooring put down. New mothers and their partners arrived in April this year, and Nirmala, that's the midwife, welcomed them by cooking a meal for them. The renovation work was done when the home had to close 
due to the pandemic. So I'd ask you to remember the work of the home. Nepal is still struggling with the effects of COVID-19, as are we. The challenge is to get as many people vaccinated, but their supplies are limited. The terrain makes it extremely difficult to reach those in the rural areas. In fact, Jane was telling me this week that in some cases they carry the elderly on their backs to bring them to vaccination clinics. So the hospital has a vital role to play in this. So I'd ask you to pray for, this is some of the staff and some of the new mums, to pray for Yuvraj and Nirmala. And as I mentioned earlier about the PW Mission Fund, when you, not just the ladies, but when we all contribute to the Mission Fund, you help us to play our part within the Council for Congregational Life and Witness. And we work in partnership with Council for Social Witness and Global Mission. So can I say thank you for your support and the support that you've given over the years, both financially and prayerfully. It is greatly, gratefully received and we want through this to show the love of Jesus in practical ways to those who need our help. Every year, PW have a theme and for this year, it continues to be side by side. And we are encouraged to be side by side with each other in our Christian walk. This year, it has been a challenge for us all as we have all experienced the pandemic. And yet there are ways in which we can do side by side. We are the body of Christ. And as our scripture reading reminded us, each one part of it. We are to play our part in the fellowship to which we belong. But how can we do this as we come out of the pandemic? We're all different, with different gifts and callings, and yet we are to work together. In this past year, that has been a challenge for us all. But if we take our hands, what can we do? It's still difficult maybe to give a hug or even shake hands at the moment, but there are times when we need someone to put an arm around us, or maybe we need to put our arm around someone. Maybe you can think of ways in which you can use your hands to make something you know that someone would appreciate. Maybe a, some food, maybe even a cake. I'll give you the recipe if you need it. Gifts that you can make anything. Think creatively. Use our mouths and ears. We are beginning to meet again socially. It's lovely to meet face to face, even though we might have a mask on. Someday it'll be nice not to have the masks. But let's take time to listen carefully and to speak words that are encouraging. Pray specifically for someone who is finding life tough at the moment. Or maybe give thanks for answered prayer. Or maybe just for our everyday blessings. Use our feet. We're now able to go into homes again. But isn't it also good that we've actually learned how to meet up outside? So maybe you could arrange to call with someone. Sit outside with a cuppa. Or go for a walk. Just so that we can have time with someone. Someone who needs our support. Use our eyes. See ways of helping others. Be open to look at those around us through God's eyes. What would he have us do for someone? Pray and ask that God would give us opportunities in which we can show his love in any way, especially practical ways that we can. Use our heart. Sorry, use our mind. We can, how can we use what we know of God to tell others about him? In these strange and unusual times, people still need to hear God's love and of his grace. We need to tell others of what God has done for us. And it's a challenge for us now, as we may have to find new ways of sharing this story. 
use our heart. When Jesus looked at people, he had compassion on them. May we have compassion in our hearts. We can't fix every situation, but we can be there to listen, to comfort, and to point towards Christ, who alone is our hope. Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. We have our part to play in sharing what God has done for us through his son, Jesus. But take heart. As we are part of his body, we do not face these challenges alone. We have help and support. God, by his spirit, has promised to be with us. Pray for each other. Encourage one another as we look to the coming weeks and months. Pray that we will know help and support through this new season which we are facing in the knowledge that our God is sovereign. He holds the future and he holds us in the palm of his hand. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are sovereign. You know what lies before us this week and in the coming weeks. May we seek your help and guidance as we begin this new session and start to meet regularly again. Help us to be the body of Christ in our community. We pray too for the Flemings as they wait for visas and Peter as he waits for medical, uh, a medical report. But we pray as they hope to return to Nepal that you will open doors for them. Pray for the Lockwoods as they seek their, your guidance for their future in 2022. For us all, as with your help, we ask that you will help us to be the body of Christ where you have placed us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we're going to finish now by singing together uh, the hymn, Lord of the Church. Let's stand and praise God together.
before I say the benediction, can I say a very big thank you to Karen for those sharing that message with us. It's really wonderful to hear how the Lord is working in that land, and we will continue to remember that great work in prayer. And thank you so much to the musicians and to uh, Jean and to Hannah, and indeed to everyone who has made this service possible. It is truly greatly appreciated, and all to the glory of Christ. Now the words of the benediction. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with you and your families this day and then forevermore. Amen. Thank you.